Hello, I'm Joe, and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome to the shop. Before we get started on today's project, I want to acknowledge some mail. I got a very nice postcard from Mark Presling in Timbirwa. <laughs> That's on the east coast of Australia. Mark is a, an amazing uh, craftsman, inventor, uh, uh, designer. Uh, he, he's got a great channel where he does casting of aluminum and bronze. He does electronics. He does machining. Mark is a retired industrial arts teacher, and that shows up very well in his video production. Uh, he's uh, uh, r really uh, accomplished uh, craftsman in many ways. Uh, I would imagine uh, most of the people who watch me already are subscribed to Mark's channel, but just in case, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he, he's really a great channel to watch. I also got a sticker and mail from Billy Huddleston in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, Billy is a uh, involved with the Knoxville.org maker space, uh, one of the prime organizers of that space, uh, which is a, a really great thing uh, for the people in Knoxville who do not have a place to work on their own projects. The maker space provides space, uh, tools, advice, assistance in procuring materials. Uh, it's a really worthy project. Uh, so I would uh, recommend that you check out Billy's channel as well. Billy uh, appears uh, frequently on Harold Waters' Sunday afternoon live stream. Uh, he, you can check him out there also, and I'll put a link to that. I, I think I could put a link to that in the description. Today's project is refurbishing the bearings on an old trailer I bought about 40 years ago with a wooden body. Uh, that body rotted off maybe 15 years ago and I put on a, an old Chevy pickup truck bed. Uh, these hubs and bearings and axle are from a very early, pretty good sized truck, maybe a ton and a half or two ton truck of, I'm going to say the late 20s, possibly early 30s, uh, but I think probably late 20s. Uh, these are pretty stout. Uh, they're uh, much larger than an equivalent passenger car front uh, axle and hubs, which uh, I happen to have one of those sitting uh, on the side. I'll take a picture of that and put it here. Uh, these hubs for this trailer are a good 50% larger in every respect including the number of bolts holding the flanges together. Uh, th these hubs have uh, 12 bolts. Uh, a typical passenger car front wheel uh, of that period would have eight bolts. Uh, everything's heavy on this. It's, the bearings are big. The, the, the hubs are thick. Uh, so I, I think they're very well capable of handling all the weight that I want to put on them. And we're Today we're going to uh, check out the bearings, we're going to repack them, we're, we're going to come up with a replacement for the original deteriorated seals, which have a kind of an unusual design. And that's the, maybe the main reason I'm doing this video, is to show this old technology and uh, that it worked then and it still works now. So we can refresh these, uh, clean them up, put them back in service, and th this trailer will be capable of getting on the road uh, for the first time since I've owned it, really. I've, I've just used it uh, in the backyard and two and three mile trips in town. I've never put it on the highway, uh, but I'm getting ready to take about an 80 mile trip with it, and I need it to be right before I get on the road. So let's get to work. The original seal is a hard felt. I don't know if it was originally this hard or if it's just uh, taken a set over time. 
the ID fits over a, a, a journal on the spindle and the OD is supposed to be a snug fit in the seal uh, diameter uh, in the hub but it just falls in uh, a little bit loose uh, so I've made some new felt rings these are not as hard uh, but I think they'll work fine uh, this ID is a little smaller than the register because I don't have a 1.985 hole punch I just have an inch and seven eighths hole punch so this will stretch out a little bit as it goes on uh, and it is uh, a snug fit already it'll be a little more snug uh, we'll grease that up thoroughly and that will should uh, work fine here uh, this is secured uh, in position uh, by this washer thin uh, perhaps uh, 18 gauge sheet metal washer that fits over the the uh, seal journal followed by the seal followed by this uh, roughly eighth inch thick washer with a 30 degree taper this fits over a uh, fillet on the uh, uh, between the seal diameter and the uh, flat surface uh, that this goes against so this this is captured by the inner bearing the inner bearing race presses against this uh, holds it in place the whole assembly is held in location so that the outer surface of the seal rubs against the the ID of the of the hub I had to make this washer this is an original it uh, was missing uh, one side was missing so I made another one and the Uh, dust cap situation uh, the, the dust cap diameter is 2.911 inches which is an odd size the largest dust cap I could find uh, is for a bore uh, 2.72 or 2.720 2 uh, so I made a couple of these rings so I'm putting these in these are a very light press fit I'm putting them in with a little reinforcement of Loctite 640 let's uh, do that and then get ready to to uh, put this all together That takes care of that. Here's how the seal business works. This washer goes over the seal surface register. This will be a slight force fit onto that. And this is uh, cap captures the seal in place and the bearing goes up against this I've got the seal lubricated thoroughly greased especially on the outer diameter and here's the heavy retaining washer that goes up against this register surface we'll follow that with the bearing which has been packed in inside and out And that holds the seal in place. 
Here we have the hub. That should be a snug fit over that seal. There is a nice chamfer lead in here to catch the edge of the seal and take it in. And that's all it took. Here's the toothed washer to register in the keyway and the nut. That feels good. That sounds good. There, it, there's some re resistance uh, from the from the seal rubbing against the uh, ID of the hub. Uh, that's to be expected, and should uh, smooth out, but still maintain contact after it wears in. So we'll get. Uh, get the other side caught up to this point, and then I'll come back and adjust this bearing. Now we run the nut up snug. Not highly torqued, but just tight enough that we, we know we've got all the play out of, out of this system. Back the nut off a little bit to get the cutter key in. I'll mention that the original dust covers were threaded caps, threaded onto the outside of the hub. So there was uh, uh, probably never uh, a cap that would fit inside of the the bore that the factory put this to. Uh, so in any case we've converted it to something that we can use, uh, that we can remove easily with a common pair of uh, dust, cup, dust cap pliers and, and this, this will seal every bit as well and now that assembly is complete and ready for highway use at highway speed uh, with the new tires uh, this ratty old trailer will be uh, good for uh, for any speed you care to travel on the road the new tires are uh, special trailer ST tires, but they're uh, rated for uh, I believe it was 85 mile an hour uh, Which is certainly more than I'll be traveling with this trailer. So let's get a tire on there and see what it looks like The old lowrider trailer is back together ready to go to work those new tires are 225 75 15 trailer tires their load range E rated for 2860 pounds so roughly two and a half tons of payload uh, at 80 pounds per square inch I'm going after a snowmobile that weighs probably well under a thousand pounds so I've got about 40 pounds of air in the tires there are no springs under that trailer so it's a rough rider but for my purposes for where I take it and what I do with it it's very nice <clears throat> because it's very low and easy to load so let's go inside and wrap this up this job went really well. <laughs> I'm really happy. This was one of those rare jobs when everything went according to plan. I had everything I needed. There were no hitches. Uh, just a real pleasure to be able to work a job like this through to the end and, and be done with it and, and not have uh, any problems and have it work out just the way you'd hoped. With that, I'll remind you to check the video description for links to Mark Presling's channel and Billy Huddleston's channel. I thank you for watching.
appreciate it very much.